good afternoon everyone it's Lonnie we are back in the shed welcome and it's uh it's afternoon it's like four o'clock now I haven't done any work until now um, and I'm not really gonna work that hard except for this video I might actually I might pull a few orders too, just kind of get ahead a little bit um, I did get this in today which is pretty cool because this is the power supply for this guy and I got this Boss GP10 guitar processor. I cleaned it up. It looks great. Um, it looked a little dirty at first, but it looks fantastic. No problems. Um, but anyway, I got this in a box for $10 with some other stuff. One of the things I already sold for $27, and another thing probably will sell for about $100, is what I have it priced at. Maybe a little less, but it's going to sell for a bunch. And then whatever this sells for. So I'm really excited about this. Um, as far as I could tell, so far it works. Like, see laser beam. I don't know what connect GK. There's a GKN right here. So it must hook up to something else. I don't have a GK. <laughs> but some of these effects, like Crystal Bell doesn't require it. Connect GK. Connect GK. GK. Base something. Blues Harp, fine. You see it has all these different effects or whatever and you can go up and down so i know these work and i know that these work because when i press them i could see i guess control or whatever that's called uh one and two working everything else seems to be working but what i need to do i want to i want to hook a guitar up uh bring it in i'm just gonna bring a guitar in and then I'll bring it back out, go to the amp, and then make sure everything sounds right. Got it tested most of the way. Um, I only have one guitar chord. <laughs> I have some other chords, but I didn't have the right ends on them. Like I didn't have mail on both ends. So I was able to plug the guitar, go from guitar to here, but I didn't have another one to get back to the amp. So um, anyway, I ended up just plugging these in to the headphone jack and it worked fine. So I was able to test every everything on here and go to the different modes and stuff like that. I feel pretty confident with this. So I'm going to go ahead and list it. Okay, I'm looking at these listings for these um, Boss GP10s and some of them are high, a, lot, are a lot higher than others and kind of figured out why like this for 291 it's got this Roland gk3 pickup with a cable and it's this it's like this thing right here that's attached to this guitar it's this pickup that you that you add to the guitar like that so i don't have anything like that some of a lot of the effects you need to have that like they for one like I have they got like a like 200 bucks somebody else got 200 bucks I'm um, looking for the highest one see this one has a pickup uh, this one says open box mine is not open box this one's pre-owned for a hundred that's weird now this one this is the highest one I've seen similar to mine now this one says meant with power adapter 286 they have a pickup so i think a i think a good place for me to be based on what i'm looking at here i think i'm going to be right around 240 dollars give that a shot okay we're gonna do a few questions now i've got uh i've got a few pulled up here one, three, six, nine, thirteen. So we're gonna go through these and then I might pull a few orders just to kind of get ahead a little bit. I'm not trying to work real hard today and for too long either. I did get that guitar pedal thing listed, uh, which is good. That's a two hundred and fifty dollars in listings or two forty or whatever it was I listed it for. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started with these. Um from Colby. Hey, Lonnie, do you think a good way to get rid of items you've had a while would be to have either a garage sale or go to a flea market or just keep the stuff till it sells? 
I typically keep the stuff till it sells. And um, another thing you can do, you, you can do those things, have garage sales, go to flea market. If you think it's worth the energy and time that you uh, expend, then yeah, you can do that. Uh, most of my stuff usually sells though. Uh, I had a bunch of jeans a while back that were just not moving and um, I got tired of looking at them and I took them to the freaking Goodwill. You know, I'm like, I'm tired of looking at these things. I had some listed and some not, and they were just like a burden on on my mind and my storage and everything. And I was like, you know what? Those don't make me happy. Look, being around them, selling them, listing them, any of that. I've got other stuff. I'll be done with it. And I just brought it to Goodwill and donated it. They can go make a little money off of it. I've made plenty of money off of them. So yeah, but uh, sure. Yeah, if you want to do garage sales or. Uh, another another thing you could do is take a bunch of stuff that's not selling if it's smaller stuff maybe make a big lot out of it and then move it like that you know throw stuff away donate stuff whatever you like uh, Randerson hey Lonnie have you ever had to deal with a return for an item shipped via GSP buyer in Australia states item doesn't work not sure how to print a return label or if it's even worth it I've never, I've actually never dealt with a GSP return. Never have. Uh, the only problems I've ever had with GSP, I've had two of each. I've had twice where items were damaged in transit. I've talked about one a few days ago where they repackaged a Funko Pop from a sturdy box into a non-sturdy bubble mailer and then it got damaged, of course. I had another thing with a chess set years ago um, and then GSP handled that and then twice I've had instances where I sent something via GSP and they repackaged it and then whenever they repackaged it they actually mixed it up with another item and sent the wrong item to my customer one time I had a customer buy a clown a little clown doll for some of y'all, if y'all been watching for a few years, three or like maybe three years, um, knew knew about this. But I bought like a, I bought like this creepy looking clown doll thing at a garage sale for like a dollar, and I put it up for sale, and I think I sold it for like a hundred bucks, and somebody in the UK bought it, hundred bucks plus GSP shipping, which ain't cheap, and uh, between here and there. That thing turned from a clown into like a cocktail dress. So the buyer received a cocktail dress and I can only assume that the person that bought the cocktail dress received a clown. <laughs> so uh, then I had another issue similar to that too. But all those GSP handled for me. Uh, I've never had one where somebody said something didn't work and I couldn't just write it off to you got the wrong thing or it broke in shipping. Uh, so I've never, I don't even know. Sounds like a major headache though. I don't even know what would happen at that point. I would suggest contacting eBay and telling them, hey, how do I handle this GSP return? Um, and then also trying to figure out like, what is the problem? Um, and if may, like, did it happen? Could it, it ha could it have happened in shipping? I'd run a, want to rule that out for sure. So I wish I could be more help. Maybe somebody in the comments could tell you uh, how they've handled GSP returns. Brian says, um, 17 years old, just started selling on eBay as a part-time hobby, but I get the money held up by PayPal every time I sell. Is there anything I can do to stop that from happening? Yeah, you just gotta keep selling, uh, Brian. I know it's kind of frustrating. You just gotta keep selling, and then as, as you, um, as you process more items and they you've proven that you could be trusted then they'll start releasing the money the reason they do that is they don't want somebody brand new that they don't know that hasn't proven themselves to sign up for ebay sign up for paypal and then say hey i've got 10 xbox ones for sale or whatever the, the thing may be sell 10 of some item for a hundred dollars each or two hundred dollars each get a quick two grand in their account then not ship and then disappear poof that's what they don't want 
so it just takes a little bit of time. I don't have an exact timeline, but at some point, uh, the PayPal money will just, it'll start being instant for you, unless you move into managed payments <laughs> before then. But yeah, I think it's just part of the thing you have to go through as a noob to uh, kind of prove yourself. Uh, also, how can I get inventory if I don't have many garage sales or thrift stores near me? Uh, drive, uh, order, order some kind of pallets or something. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, look on Facebook Marketplace, storage auctions, retail arbitrage. You know, there's a, there's a lot of different ways. Some people do. I haven't done it much. Online arbitrage, eBay to eBay. Buy a lot of stuff on eBay, break it up into smaller pieces, and then sell it back on eBay. I've seen that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know a lot of times. I don't know how. It seems to me somebody that lives like in an extremely rural area, that would just. People say, "Oh, you could do it," and yeah, I imagine you can, but it's always going to be easier to be a reseller when when you're in a area that has like a lot of houses and a lot of stores and a lot of people because there's gonna be more stuff it's gonna be more plentiful probably cheaper probably better stuff uh where you live matters as if you're reselling used goods it matters a lot and you know people try and say it doesn't but uh it does <laughs> i've seen it um good luck though taylor sims Hey Lonnie, when you get the resurfacer, can we expect a full video on the usage? Yes, I'm getting that um, Elm ELM Eco Pro 2 resurfacer. It's supposed to be getting here Tuesday, and I cannot wait. Um, and I'm definitely going to be doing at least a, probably a couple of full blown review type videos and share exactly what I think and how it does, and I'll show the process and everything. Um, I'm looking forward to doing that. So it's supposed to get here Tuesday. So I imagine, I imagine I'll be doing a video on that probably late next week. So looking forward to that. Brandon says, uh, I'm wondering what your thoughts on FedEx Smart Post are. I've read that FedEx, FedEx Smart Smart Post price is an estimate and can often be way less than what they charge you after the package is delivered. Have you ever been charged more than the estimate with FedEx before? Thanks for the content. Yeah, so uh, I haven't used Smart Post in a while. Actually, I haven't found that the quoted price, at least for Smart Post, has been worthwhile, worth it to use it versus uh, FedEx or UPS Ground. It used to be a pretty good bit cheaper, but then they raised the rates not too long ago, and I don't know if there's a problem with the calculator or what. I haven't seen any opportunities where I want to use it. Uh, as far as I know, I don't think you even get insurance with FedEx Smart Post. It's super slow. It, it you have to drop it off at FedEx. And you, you you have to drop it off at FedEx, supposed to anyways, and then it it gets transported to the distant end post office, and then it goes to UPS to the door, and I don't know. It's kind of a messy service. I. I used to use it a little bit back when it was cheap, but I haven't found where it's cheap anymore. And really, I don't use FedEx at all anymore because I had, I did have a few packages that I got charged more than the estimate, and I found out that I could ship UPS via PayPal, and I looked, and it was ve either very comparable or sometimes cheaper for me to ship UPS ground via PayPal uh, versus FedEx, and no surprises. And I've had, and I have a really good spot to drop off UPS, and the FedEx spots that I was using to drop off proved to be problematic. So there were a few things going on: price, service, and ease of drop off. Just make UPS a no-brainer for me. That's why I've been using them lately. Um, but that's my experience. Everybody else's experience may be different. I don't know. But no, I haven't used. Uh, smart post in quite a while uh, Matthew says hey Lonnie when it comes to buying lots of video games movies etc what have you found is the best way to list them individually versus lots versus variations uh, well when it comes to video games I, I would come up with a number that you think makes sense whatever like my number is typically eight to ten dollars plus shipping if I can get that for a video game I'll sell it individually 
<clears throat> you may see me see, sell even cheaper ones sometimes. Um, but a lot of times if they're $5 games, I'll lot them up, sell them all at once. Sometimes I won't. Like processing of video games is so fast. Uh, you know, it's up to you. How much do you, how much do you want to sell stuff for? That's the question. And then lot up the rest. Movies though, like DVD movies, it's tough to find DVD movies that are really worth selling on their own. Most DVD movies you find, that I find, um, they don't make sense to sell in, as anything other than lots, at least in my opinion. You might find a few gems every now and then though. Uh, and you said lots versus variations. Uh, I have sold, I did make variation listings for video games in the past. And I actually had eBay pull down the variation listing and tell me that that was like against their terms of doing variation listing. So I haven't done it again. So variation listings, they're, they're really gray, really muddy on what, what you can and can't do. Uh, but basically they want you to do it for like size, color, but then they also have some people to do it for style. Um, but all the same kind of product. But then I don't think they want people doing it with video games, books, movies, things like that. They want those to be individual listings so they can make more money, I guess. Although now, um, if you're you know doing managed payments, we get all these extra listings in those exact categories. Um, maybe they won't care so much. But I have actually had a, a video game variation listing pulled before. So keep that in mind. All right, here's one from Kelly G. I'm a new reseller and I'm dealing with my first return. It was a $10 item with free returns. They submitted a return request on July 10th, the first day they received it. They have until July 24th to return it. It still shows as USPS awaiting item. I've contacted the buyer once with no response. Am I to accept I may never get the item back or is there something else I can do? Uh, I'm assuming you haven't, you haven't given them their money back yet, have you? It doesn't sound like you have. I don't think you have anyways. Uh, whenever somebody opens a return with me and they don't send the item back, I stay deadly silent. I stay extremely silent and I hope they don't send it back. And if they don't, I'll close the return. Or if I forget about it, which is more likely the case, eBay will close the return for me at some point. And no, I would not. Hey, if you send it back, hey, if you send it back, that's not, you know, eBay already did that. eBay already said, hey, okay, now package it up, send it back, and then you'll get your money back. That's on them to do that. So, yeah, don't bug them. <laughs> don't bug them. Hope, hope it goes past the date, and then you can contact eBay and get it closed. And then that's it. They're done. So, yeah, leave them alone. <laughs> don't wake the bear, you know, uh, unless you really want it back for some reason. R&D Studios, can you sell the VCR for parts only even if you get $10 for it? You can, um, however, I, and I talked about this yesterday, I don't mind selling stuff for $10, but if I sell something for $10, it better be a real easy pack. It better not be difficult to pack, it better not be heavy, the shipping better not be expensive on it either. Because anytime you have high shipping, you, you're taking on more liability. So you're gonna you know, sell something for 10 or $15. You're gonna probably have $15 into the shipping. You're gonna have $4, $4 plus in fees. By the time you do all that, now, now you're making what, five to, five to 10 bucks to ship a broken VCR and you gotta pack it well? No, it's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it, um, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe some people wanna do that, I don't. I don't want to ship broken VCRs. I look at a broken VCR as just a cost of selling VCRs. That's how I handle it anyway. Certain percentage is going to be bad. That's why you buy them cheap. I throw out the bad ones and I keep the good ones and sell them and make great profits. So, yeah, I don't like messing with broken VCRs typically. Maybe like a DVD recorder or something that might be worth it. But a plain old Jane VCR, nah. I do sell plenty of stuff parts only, not working as is, but not VCRs. Here's a genuine question. This is from Shane F. Here's a genuine question. What is the point of having a store besides the fact 
of more free listings and having your fees drop by like 1%. Please help. Okay, so um, store may or may not be a good fit for you, but I think it's worth looking at for, for just about anyone if you do any kind of volume at all. If you're just selling a couple things a month, five, 10 things a month, it's probably not worth it to get a store, honestly. Probably better off not paying for that and um, just getting your free listings and listing your stuff and you know not having the store but uh, the one thing that one thing that I didn't like about the question having your fees drop by like 1% so well, let's look at that case okay so if and th this this will change depending on how much you sell of course but let's say let's say you sell I don't know four thousand dollars worth of stuff in a month right now I, I have no idea what how much you're selling um if you don't have a store you're gonna pay depending on what you're selling because some things are higher like um you need to look at the ebay final value fees because like music like cds and stuff uh 12 percent on those but most stuff is 10 percent so uh just the final value fees nodding and this is if the 4,000 includes your shipping. Just final value fees is gonna be $400, okay? If you have a basic store on up, final value fees on the $4,000 is gonna be $366. So the 1% approximately, actually it's 0.85% uh, difference in final value fees actually ends up being closer to 10% savings on your uh, final value fees for the month. And just this right here, like if you sell four grand, uh, just this right here will come pretty close to paying for the, uh, the basic store. Uh, I can't remember how much the basic store cost. Okay, yeah, basic store, actually at that level, if you're selling four grand a month, basic store is $22 a month if you agree to do it for a year on like on a yearly basis so uh you know that's something to think about again if you're selling a thousand dollars a month then you need to readjust those figures you'd only be looking at like a hundred dollars and uh ninety ninety one dollars for savings of about nine dollars that doesn't cover the whole cost of the store but you also have to factor in the listings that you get for free you also can run sales uh you could do vacation mode you can have categories so those are a few things um something else to consider is that not all categories are 9.15 percent a lot of categories are a lot lower if you sell and this is is if you have a basic store on up uh, most consumer electronics, and except for this stuff here, 6.15%, uh, which is a lot lower. If you sell a lot of video game consoles, 4%. Um, most video games and consoles except video games. <laughs> well, that's a big except, isn't it? Um, but yeah, the consoles are at 4%. Stamp 6.15, that's a lot lower. Musical instruments and gear um, is really low. So there's some there's some big savings depending on what you sell, but most things are 9.15%, except for these exceptions. Uh, most computers, tablets, look, look you're selling uh, desktops and all-in-ones, laptops, Computer components, drives, monitors, printers, 4% final value fee if you have a basic store on up. So take a look at all that stuff, do the math, um, and figure out if it's worth it for you. Okay, Jason Snyder says, I've been watching a lot of you sellers pack, and I'm wondering, am I the only one that prints a packing slip? No, you're not. A lot of people do print packing slips. Um, a lot of people like to print packing slips and then use those to pull their orders, which I understand. Uh, a lot of people also think packing slips can help in case the package, the something happens to the label and USPS or whoever the carrier is can go into the package and 
say, oh, here's a packing slip. This is where it needs to go. And then your package could still possibly uh, get to its destination. I don't know if that actually happens very often. I don't know how often labels get damaged or removed like that. Uh, I don't know that it's ever happened to me, but it could have. And maybe some of my lost packages, that's where what happened to them. Um, yeah, but having said all that, I don't do it. But a lot of people do. And I, I know a lot of people feel very strongly about doing it. And a lot of people feel very strongly about not doing it. I just, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's worth it. And I choose not to do it. Joshua Browning, are you ever going to use your big cartel site again? I am. Uh, I'm, whenever I whenever I do actually get the box resizers in again, I'll sell them there, and maybe I might do some other kind of merch or something there. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely use it again. There's no doubt. I haven't canceled it or anything. It only costs me like ten bucks a month, so I'm gonna keep it active. Last one, Gregory. Lonnie, quick question. I have a bunch of Star Wars figures, 3.75 inches, three three and three quarter inches. They're loose from the early 2000s. What do you think the best way to sell on eBay? Lock them up or individually? I'm dreading all the research required to find out, to figure out who is who. What are your thoughts? Hmm. I know it. I know how you feel. Uh, I've had stuff like that before that I dreaded, and if you really are dreading it, then make a make some lots. How many do you have? You said a bunch. It doesn't say how many. At least right here. Um, make a big lot of them or make several lots and throw them up at auction no you won't get top dollar uh, but you'll get some amount of money and you'll be done with it and you want to put in all the work that's what I'll do if it's something you're dreading then don't put a bunch of time into it you know it sounds like you don't want to do it but you can still sell it like that's a good thing if, if you choose to take a little less money you can put in uh, a lot less effort and still get them sold and probably give somebody a little better better deal but uh, yeah it, it's okay you don't have to research everything you can just put it on the table and take a picture and either come up with a price a buy it now price or put it up at auction and you know know that if you do get less money than you would have by putting in the research well, you saved a heck of a lot of time, and everybody likes to say time is money, right? Well, there you go. You're trading off time for money in that case. And I wouldn't feel bad about it if you don't want to do it. So, uh, oh, we need we need to give this thing away. The uh, socket shelf. Okay, doing the giveaway for the socket shelf. Um, thanks for everyone who commented and watched the video and stuff. And whoever wins, I hope you like it. It's one of these guys, just like this. This one's sealed, and I will ship it anywhere in the world. The winner of this thing, uh, just email me, shedflips at gmail.com. Shedflips at gmail.com. Here we go. This is the video. It's already plugged in here. Filter du duplicate users. Filter comments based on socket shelf. And we're going to get YouTube comments. Find out how many qualifying comments we have on that video. And we have 543. So you have a 1 out of 543 chance if you entered. Uh, start raffle and pick random winner. Good luck, everyone. You may see your name flying by. Who is it? It is Stuff Smart. And they said socket shelf. Simple. <laughs> so Stuff Smart, email me, shedflips at gmail.com. And uh, I may get you to do something to prove that you are actually stuff smart and then i'll send this out to you once i and give me your address too so in that email so thanks a lot everyone for participating well i'll do some more giveaways in the future um what am i gonna do now i think i'm gonna pull a couple of orders then we'll call it a video okay well this is an odd occurrence none of these i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pull garage flips orders that i have so far it's saturday night uh, none of these are viewer sales. These are all organic randoms as far as I know anyways uh, first one is for 100 galactic connections GC 22 I put them on sale $27.99 free ship What I say that number was GC 22 So it is 
That's good to see these guys moving a little bit. I'm good at that price. Here it is. This sold for $27.99 free ship. And then uh, I wasn't too happy about what I paid for this at an estate sale last weekend. But I'm happy with the sales price. It's a caller ID. And it is right here. Plastic drawer with the location that I had on my screen here. Sold this for $20.99 plus shipping on top. I paid five bucks for it. So I'm happy with that. It was a real easy listing. Uh, next up is a comic book. Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose, number 21. T21. And I think I'm actually... Yep, I was almost flipped to the exact one that I needed. It's this one right here. This sold for $19.99 plus shipping on top. And let's see. Oh, this is a cool thing here. This is a case. Um, I call it a vintage aluminum briefcase. Spy. I put like 007 spy case on there just because, you know, that's what it kind of looked like to me. Uh, on the Funko shelf, just listed this the other day, and she's right here. Isn't that cool? It's really a neat looking case. I considered keeping it, but somebody's going to enjoy that. It's got a combo lock up top. It's nice. The interior's pretty nice too. Got thirty nine ninety nine plus shipping on top for that. Don't even remember where I got that. I know I wouldn't have paid more than probably five dollars for it though. Uh, Avon True Color B Blushed Cheek Color Blushing Nude. Okay, B Blushed Blushing Nude Avon True Color. All right, it's gonna be in one of these Avon boxes. Hmm, it's not that. That's not the right shape. True color. No. This must be it. Be blushed. Blushing nude. This is it. $5.99 plus shipping on top for this. It's probably like the cheapest Avon item I had in that box or in those boxes. And then sold a Lego set. I bought two Lego sets. Uh, how much? How much did I pay? I can't remember. I can't remember what I paid for these two Lego sets. But I bought them like a couple of weeks ago. I sold the first one really quick. And basically this one was going to be my profit for both. And I sold it for $30 plus shipping. This is a Lego City Advent Calendar. And it's right here. Yeah, this is it right here. This sold for $29.99 plus shipping on top. The other set sold for somewhere around there. Well, how much did I pay for that? Probably some of y'all know. I want to say I paid like 20 bucks for both, 25 or something like that. I can't remember. Um, and then last thing I'm pulling, this is stuff I listed just yesterday. This is a reversible BDU Gore-Tex jacket. It's pretty cool. What, which one is it? It's a Z5, and it had a uh, flaw on it. There was a stain on the desert camo side. This is it right here. Stain on the desert camo side that I just couldn't remove. Worked on it for, I didn't work on it long, maybe five minutes or so. So uh, I was like, you know what? I'll just price it a little lower and I'll sell it anyway. And I did, I priced it at $70 plus shipping on top. Uh, padded flat rate of course and I sold it and that was something that was on death rack so death rack this was actually nestled up inside of the death rack so the death rack sales are already happening so I'm gonna get this stuff packed and edit some video and I will see y'all again soon thanks so much for watching take care guys bye bye